What is up, YouTube? Thanks for joining Living with Less. We're gonna get right into how we make our 13 cent coffee. So if you are a coffee drinker, stay tuned for this video. But first, this is Living with Less. recap, if this is your first time tuning into our channel, Living With Less is a channel about gaining financial independence, living minimalist, as well as living as sustainably as possible. But with no further ado, let's get into how the heck we make our coffee. So the first thing we want to talk about is the vehicle that we use to make our coffee. So we don't have a machine. Actually, what we have, it's called a mocha pot. It looks something like this. And in fact, this, we have it right here. This is what our precious mocha pot looks like. Some of you might know it as a Cuban coffee machine or maker. Um, that's how I was familiar with it growing up in Key West. And um, it's really the best thing I think for making coffee because it's not a machine. So the way it works is that you fill it up with coffee grinds and you have your water and you put it on a stove. So there's no electrical component to this thing. So this thing is not going to break. The only thing that could possibly go is the gaskets, but I've had this thing for two years and I haven't had to replace anything on it. So really a mocha pot is probably the most sustainable thing that you can have. You don't have to deal with breaking machines and having to replace it, let alone all the waste that comes from all these machines that are going into these landfills. Just have one mocha pot and that does it. So my favorite part about this mocha pot is the price point. Um, so you can pick this up on Amazon for $5. Um, we'll leave a link in the description below. Um, actually, when I was looking at research for this video, I was looking at the best selling uh, coffee maker on Amazon and it sells for $70. Um, so all of you out there that are buying this, look elsewhere because you can make a huge amount of savings right in the beginning. Um, and we love making our coffee this way. So an important thing to know that with a mocha pot is that it makes espresso. So when you're looking for what coffee to buy, you're going to want to make sure that you buy espresso grounds, which this is different than any sort of regular ground coffee, maybe like Folgers. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, because that's a thicker ground bean to where espresso is more fine. So hearing that off the bat, you might think that that sounds expensive, but it's actually on the contrary. So we shop here locally, typically at Publix. And so when we go to Publix for a while, we were getting Cafe Bustelo, uh, big Cuban coffee here. And then I think they got bought by Procter & Gamble. So not really anymore, but whatever. Um, so we go there and we like to try to shop some Florida brands. So the one that we actually just picked up, we have it here with us, uh, Caf Cafe El Aguila. Um, sorry, excuse me, low in the background. <laughs> so this coffee that we have, this is a 10 ounce bag and this costs us $2 and 50 cents. And this bag will probably last us, I would say about two months. So two months worth of coffee, just on $2 and 50 cents. And that's good for about 25 fill ups of this mocha pot here. Um, and each fill up has three servings of coffee in it. So 75 servings total from this bag here equals uh, about three and a half cents per serving of coffee. Um, so that's a pretty low number. Um, so if you want to just drink coffee, just the straight espresso, you can drink it for three and a half cents, but we'll get into what else we add into our coffee to make it super delicious and that 13 cent price point. Okay, so now the moment you've all been waiting for, our 13 cent coffee. So once you got your mocha pot all primed with your water in it and your grinds put on that stove top. So now you have your espresso. So here in Key West, it's like 90 freaking degrees all the time, unless it's some nice day in February. So we exclusively have this ice. So for that reason, we like to set it aside for a bit so that way the coffee can cool off. And then from there, we split that between us two and then we like to add soy milk to it. 
I eat plant-based diet, he's predominantly plant-based, so we like to have a plant-based creamer, if you will. So we actually have our creamer right here. <laughs> so this is vanilla soy milk from Publix. So this costs us $2.99, and we add this into our coffee, we figured as a two to one ratio to our coffee. So when we do that, it comes out to nine cents per serving of this soy milk. So combine that with three cents coming from the coffee grinds, that's where you hit our, well, it's actually like nine and a half or so. So that's where we hit our 13 cent coffee. Alrighty guys, we got a little bonus for ya. So when we were doing our research to see how much a cup of coffee for us costs to make, this guy got carried away with the numbers and created this absolutely insane hypothetical situation. So let's see what you got. Okay, so just to preface, I am a little bit neurotic about spreadsheets and doing number calculations. So yes. I'm glad to be able to share this with you if you've stuck around to this point. Um, so here is the scenario. While doing research on the subject, I found that the average price of a cup of coffee in the US at a place like Starbucks is $2.99. So our 13 cent iced coffee is saving us $2.86 every time we decide to not go out and buy a cup. Okay. So in theory, if you were to do this 365 days a year, at the end of the year, you would have $1,043 saved up. So that's a lot of money. Um, that's pretty cool to have $1,000 at the end of the year, but it doesn't stop there. So if you were to take this $1,000 and invest it at a 7% growth rate at the end of each year, and if you were to do this from the age of 25 until you were 65, so a 40 year span, this number is gonna grow to $208,000. Um, so even though you only saved 40,000 from the one, the single day decisions of, of changing your coffee habits, this number is gonna compound and grow to a huge number over time. Yeah, guys, like this is huge. And this is, I know, an extrapolated example, but just think about changes in your daily life that you can make to save money. Because in the end, living with less can make you rich. So honestly, remember that. I swear to God it will. I mean, we're on our journey. We want you guys to be with us. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about living minimalist on your way to financial freedom, living sustainably, please subscribe below. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. We'll catch you guys next week.